Mark, you're sticking with us. Uh, Republicans will be at 12 in their growing field by the end of the day today. Uh, and the first Republican presidential primary debate is going to take place this summer in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And the RNC has set some very interesting new rules. Yes, tomorrow, let's welcome in, welcome in Republican National Committee Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel. Good morning, Ronna. Good morning. Great to be with you. Ronna, great to have you back on. Um, I want to talk about Bank Your Vote in just a second, but I want to get your take on, on some of these new debate thresholds that the RNC is rolling out. So candidates, if I've got this right, they've got a poll at at least 1% in three separate polls. Uh, they've got to agree to endorse the eventual nominee, and they've got to have 40,000 unique donors to their campaign upon the time of the debate. Um, oh, take us through this process. Do you expect all 12 of these candidates to meet those thresholds by the time we're in Milwaukee in August? One, I think it's very uh, acceptable to have thresholds to make the debate stage. I think we should have a standard if you're going to be running for president of the United States and not everybody deserves to be on that debate stage. So 1% in three national polls, I don't think that's very hard to get if you're a legitimate candidate. 40,000 small dollar donations. I think this is critical. If we are going to be a competitive party and we're going to beat Joe Biden, we need to build that small dollar fundraising arm in our party. The Democrats have been doing this for decades. Act Blue was around for 15 years before the Republicans put up a, a platform in 2019 for the first time. So we need that. And then the final, the Beat Biden pledge. Why would we have anybody on the Republican National Committee debate stage take time away from the eventual nominee or be on that stage and have a platform in front of Republican primary voters and then have them turn around and say, I'm not going to support the nominee and I'm not going to focus on beating Joe Biden. So they should say that up front. Okay, so is uh, Chris Christie going to be on the stage? Because he I is ardently anti-Trump. I think he will. Uh, you know, I've talked to him. He doesn't love the pledge, but the pledge is, is there. Yeah. Everybody's known about it. I'm sorry. This isn't about one candidate. This is about beating Joe Biden. That's okay, why we're calling but, but it the Ronna, all of these candidates—they've got to, somebody's got to come out of this group of 12 right now in order to take on Joe Biden head to head. What are you going to do about Donald Trump if he decides not to appear at that first debate in August? How do you handle that? That's his choice. I mean, I know there's people in his campaign saying you're up 30. Why would you get on a debate stage? Why would you take the hits? That's going to be his decision as to whether he gets on the debate stage. I feel like all of them should get on the debate stage. I right. think, why wouldn't you take the oxygen in the room to contrast against Joe Biden? Again, as the RNC chair, I'm always focusing on who we need to beat, which is Joe Biden. But we're not going to have so varsity not, and junior varsity debates again, right, like we did in 2016? I really hope we don't have the kitty table and the yeah. big table. Yeah. I want to have it on one debate stage. Go ahead, Mark. Ma Madam Chair, I'm really uh, uh, impressed by the tone you're bringing to this notion of the pledge, and I totally get, I think, why you have it. But what does it really mean? What do you have to pledge to do and how will you enforce it? In other words, what if someone signs it but then doesn't follow through? Well, then they're exposing themselves as somebody who's untrustworthy to the voters. Mark, you are talking to voters all the time, so am I. There's an appetite to win the White House. Why? Because people are hurting. They're paying more for everything in their lives. Their kids are still suffering from deficits in school. They're dealing with a fentanyl crisis, a border crisis, an energy crisis, a crime crisis. They're scared. And they do not want to see any candidate get on that stage who does not have the what, number one overriding goal but what does to it beat mean? Joe Biden. So if you we're, lie, we're, we're running if out you time. lie, then yeah. the voters will know but what that does you it lie. mean? What are they obligated to do if they sign the pledge? Simply say, I endorse? Do they have to campaign? They're, yeah, they're saying, I'm going to support the eventual nominee. No, they don't have to campaign, campaign or do a, a, you know, a hug. Right, they don't even right. have to give them a hug. <laughs> we I don't have to have, care yeah. about that. <laughs> they just have to say, I am pledging to support, support the eventual nominee who the voters and delegates choose. And they're basically saying, I support the voters. Right. That's really right. what it is. We don't need a, a Barack right. Hillary moment at, right. the, at the convention <laughs> no, or something like that. Or a Ted hugs. Kennedy, Jimmy Carter moment that didn't happen. Yeah, we don't um, need to yeah. go to the spa together. None of those. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Um, Rhonda, great to see you again. Come back and see us real soon. Uh, always a pleasure Thanks, having Rhonda McDaniel Go to bankyourvote.com. we got to get that. We're launching that today. Bankyourvote.com. We're trying to make sure voters and our party know it's important to bank your vote early so we don't let the Democrats get ahead of start. Ron, I'm yeah. so glad you brought that up. Um, I'm sorry we didn't discuss this uh, in, in more detail, but this answers the question that I asked you the day after the midterm elections. How do Republicans get in front of voting before Election Day? Bankyourvote.com is the answer. Ron McDaniel will pick that up again very soon. Thank you. Thanks, uh, guys.